Welcome, dear viewers, fellow learners. I am Mr. Mwari Murada, Mwari Mu, and Lundula Penedikulu, presenting today's topic titled Word and Phonetic Syllabifications, How and Why. You see, we need to introduce this topic because it's very important in our oral performances, pronunciation, as well as when we write or read some documents, we always come across, you know, syllables. So, before proceeding, syllabification as a definition is another way of saying syllabication. So, what is it? It is the division of a longer word into syllables as prescribed by grammar. And what does grammar say? Grammar prescribes that English words be divided only into syllabic parts. If we are in default of space at the right or in the right hand margin, that's when we should apply syllabification or syllabication. Now, this is an important topic. I want to, sum, to summarize it by making this kind of analogy. I want to say that syllabication or syllabification is to literacy as the four mathematical operations are to numeracy. You see, once introduced the anomaly, syllabification and the four mathematical operations, division, multiplication, subtraction, and what is multiplication, are introduced at lower primary school. And once they are introduced to us learners, we will be with them for the rest of our lives. Whether we go to the university, whether we are doing trigonometry, the four operations will be there. Geometry, they will be there. Whatever, algebra, the four mathematical operations will always be applicable. In the same way, Syllabification, once we have been introduced to how to divide a word, a longer word, into syllables, once that's, that has been introduced to us at lower primary school, this knowledge will be with us for the rest of our lives, everywhere. I want to open a bracket and say that take any textbook, including, including even the Bible, you will find that everywhere words have been syllabified or syllabicated in the normal way, as prescribed by grammar. It, they are present everywhere. You know, syllables are present in both speech and written communication. So, that's what I wanted to tell you as an introduction. We cannot just do away with ourselves. There are others have presented the same topic, but as we go along, you will see that we have brought in something new as usual. I will leave it to you to peruse this information at your own pace. That's why we are doing, we are going like that slowly. We have just said that they are found everywhere. Now, the question, the first question is how? And the, ne the, ne the next question, you see, we say how and why? Let's start with how to syllabify, how to syllabicate longer words. All in all, we can say that the British system of syllabification relies on the meanings of each syllable, whereas the American syllabication relies on the sound. That's what we have said. Look at these words. This is Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary. They will syllabify this word project in this way, pro is a meaningful, you know, syllable to mean for, pro or anti and so on. And then eject, eject, reject, all of those. So these are divided in their meaningful, you know, syllables. There is the sound in the American Webster Dictionary. They will, you know, divide this word as a verb. I'm not talking as a noun, as a verb. They will say project, 
project. The British will say important, important. The American will say important. They would syllabify, you know, this, this word differently. The same thing for the, for the British. This is stand, standard, standard. But the American, standard, standard. So we have just to know that, and as teachers, we have to explain to our students. But there is another thing, we will see it as we go along. Even within the UK, the Cambridge syllabification is often different from the Oxford syllabification. And the onus, the responsibility, falls on us teachers to inform the learners that this is how they do it. All right, we shall see that later on. Why do we syllabify? Do we have to syllabify? Two reasons. We have said mainly for the pronunciation as well as for dividing a word into syllables so that we can, at the end of the line, uh, in the right margin, we can divide it into syllables using a hyphen. So hyphenated words, you know, uh, have, must be done in their syllables. We can continue. It is important to know that any wrong syllabification will mislead the readers and even the meaning can be lost. Let's take these four words. Nowhere, nothing, mother, bed, be draggled. Now, if you split, the, look at these pairs. They have, we have proposed two pairs for each one of these four. Shall we divide it there? And this will, will read now, here. And there, nowhere. No thing, nothing. Mother and ma. No, 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 this is not the ma. This is mother. And this is mother. And then, but, dragon, or be draggled. As you can see, it's the latter. Syllabification, which is the correct one, because it can be traced in the dictionary. You can't split mother like that at will. It's impossible. It's wrong. It's ungrammatical. That's what we are saying. So we have to be very careful. You can see how the meaning can be lost, how the pronunciation can change, and then every, the, the, the communication becomes impossible, incomprehensible. You see what I mean? Okay. So I've shown you that's the warning. Now, we have a few rules we have to learn by heart on how to syllabify, how to syllabicate. Rule number one, never syllabify or syllabicate a monosyllabic word. If a word comprises only one syllable, like head, heads, you cannot syllabify it. It's monosyllabic. They are all there. You read it at your own pace. Rule number two. Rule number two says, let's go there, don't syllabicate proper nouns. Strictly speaking, grammar, the final authority on language, forbids that we syllabicate proper nouns. Simply that. If you come across them, it's one of those mistakes. In an exam situation, you will lose marks. I wish to guarantee you. Rule number three. Don't syllabify a syllable comprising only one letter. We have already said that. Now, this one here is in a longer word. Have you seen? Amen or amen, you cannot syllabify it in writing. It's wrong. In speech, yes, you can do so. Libido, risky. You cannot syllabify all those letters, single letters that are found in a ring, in a circle because they comprise only one letter. And grammar says, for syllabification to take place, there should be at least two, two or more, okay, letters in that syllable. So we cannot syllabify these because they have only one letter, whether at the beginning or at the end of the word. Rule number four, compound words that are hyphenated can only be syllabified where there is already a hyphen. You see, we talked in our previous clips about compound words, and we said that there were three types. Hyphenated compound, open compound, and solid compound. So when you have a hyphenated compound, 
we cannot add another hyphen, it will make the reading difficult and it is misleading, it's confusing. So that's the rule, rule number four. I think we are through with the rules. Now let's come back to the, what I said, what we said earlier on. Even within the UK, there is the Oxford syllabification, the Cambridge syllabification, and the, what, the, the US syllabification or syllabication. Let's take this word, brutality. Oxford, the eighth edition, would syllabify it like that. This is a syllable. There are three syllables here. When you go to the Cambridge International Dictionary of English, Cambridge English, they have four syllables for this word. And the Americans, they also comply with four syllables. Am I right? Yes. So on this one, it must be a problem, the, the, the American complies, is in agreement with the... No, 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 no. <laughs> the Americans have their own, they have their own. It's not even agreeing here because I is together with T, Y. But here, I is alone in the Webster third edition. As you can see throughout, there are different ways of syllabifying longer words. You have to find it, read it at your own pace and see how uh, different they are. Now, this purple color and this red color, purple is for Oxford, red is for Cambridge. Where do Americans agree? The number of times the Americans agree with Cambridge is nine, these are 17 items. So, Oxford, Cam US and Cambridge syllabications are in agreement by nine over 13, which is about 53%. As for US and Oxford, is four out of 17, which is about 23%, 23 and a half percent. And they are, the US own syllabication is another four out of 17. These were, you know, items, words taken at random. And so that you can give us a correct picture. Before proceeding, I wish to say something that it is upon us teachers to inform students that there are different types of syllabication. If a student, you know, owning a dictionary in some part of the world like here in, in Africa is almost like a luxury. Not many people can afford it. And so if a parent can afford to have one kind of dictionary, that's enough for the home. Now, if a child, especially when we are following the British pattern, when a child has got the, uh, one child has got the Oxford, another child has got Cambridge, if they produce this kind of differences, discrepancies, as teachers, we are not supposed to penalize those children. Let me be like the lawyers for the learners. No, we are not. Because it is, you know, we can refer to them, we can, they are traceable in the dictionaries, which the, the child has got at home. It's, we have to inform them to say, this is British, that's American, this is Cambridge. Then the child must not be penalized. But, you know, dividing a word into syllable is very much the norm in English. Everywhere you go, even in the Bible, it's there. In any kind of academic writing, literature, words, longer words are always syllabified. So no teacher should penalize a child for, you know, using one type of syllabication, you know, over and the others, uh, because the child is innocent, and we are, you know, in a book trapped kind of situation. We cannot really afford. To us here, it's a luxury to buy those things. We cannot, we cannot afford. Even where people are wealthy, teachers should inform the students to say, you know, we haven't got one type of syllabification, but many, at least three. And then the children will be, you know, secured for their marks. Deducting marks from children, if they produce, you know, a syllabication which the teacher is not aware of, is just not fair, it's being unfair to the child. That's about word syllabication. Let's now go to phonetic syllabification. Again, the differences are there. I'm talking about the sound production. So, here we have the Oxford. They will say, 
education. That's that's Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary. Cambridge Advanced Learners Dictionary, fourth edition, edition number four, will produce education. Edu education. And then the Americans, their own way. Edge, edge, education, education. So that's typically American. Has nothing to do with the two. And so on and so forth. Look at Quandary, the sound. And we're talking about phonetic syllabication. Forget about the word syllabification. So Quandary, look at how they've, you know, transcribed the sound, different from the Cambridge and different also from the American. And then we come to this one. Infatu, infatuation, infatuation. That's Oxford. Cambridge, infatuation, infatuation. And then American, infatuation, almost in agreement with this one. As for, there are only five items which you can read at your own pace. Here, this word would be pronounced in the UK, transcribed phonetically as brew, two syllables, two phonetic syllables, brew. But Cambridge and the US is only one sound, brew. So we have here, out of five, you know, Cambridge and US, they agree only once, Oxford twice, and US has got its own two out of five. That can reflect a general picture. They are not always in agreement. So again, in an oral presentation exam, for example, why must we penalize a child who would produce the Cambridge pronunciation or the Oxford pronunciation? If the teacher is not aware, this is very unfair. We just have to be aware as teachers. You see, if you are a teacher, you should know more than the students so that you guide them properly. You can't just restrict pass you know, unfair rulings and say you are wrong because... It, it, no, who are you? We are all at school learning, even teachers. You see, from the cradle to the grave is a school day time. So teachers must continue learning. It's not because you have this degree, that PhD, masters, that learning would stop. No, we must always update our education, you see, knowledge. So this is what I wanted to transfer, to communicate with, to exchange with you. I wish to thank you for really uh, spending your precious time listening to me. And I hope that by the same token, you have at least, you know, learned one or two things from this presentation. No one is perfect. Nothing is, you know, and no angel would ever descend from heaven to write the exam for us. We just have to be academically inquisitive. We don't want to be academic sloth, sloth. Academic sloths, you know sloth, that animal in South Africa, I mean, I mean in South America, for to climb a tall tree it takes about the whole day. Very slow. Now, that's not fair for academic. We just have to work hard. Education is not for free, parents are paying, government are paying, and we, learners, must our sponsors by producing good results. So, once again, we have to be hardworking and we have to have always our nose in books, reading, reading, reading. If not so, or even visiting, you know, browsing educational websites, not just for fun, entertainment, and all those, you know, where entertainment industry is really conquering the mind of the children to such a point that the reading culture is the, almost disappearing. It's, it's sad. I wish to encourage you to read continuously, especially read good books, textbooks, you see, and then you will upgrade your knowledge. Once again, I wish to thank you for your attention, and then let's continue the discussion on our you know, social media. Everything is there for you to see. And then the contact address are here. And so kindly do await the next presentation on French. <laughs>